In this presentation, I will detail the mitigation of cell phase modulation using simply a sinusoidally time varying phase. This work has been achieved at the Laboratoire Interdisciplinaire Carnot de Bourgogne from the University of Bourgogne in Dijon in France by Frédéric Odo and myself, Christophe Hino, in close collaboration with Sonia Boscolo from the Aston Institute of Photonic Technologies. My presentation will be organized as follows. As an introduction, I will recall what is phase, phase modulation and some of the methods that can be used to mitigate SPM. Then I will discuss the principle of our mitigation scheme and I will show the experimental setup that we use as well as the result that we have obtained. In the final part, I will discuss the influence of the pulse duration and the dispersions. So uh, the cell phase modulation or SPM for short is a direct consequence of the Kerr nonlinearity and it leads to the modulation in the temporal domain of the phase of the pulse. This uh, phase is directly proportional to the coefficient gamma that takes into account the, coefficient, the nonlinear coefficient of the material as well as the effective area of the waveguide. It is also proportional to the intensity profiled of the pulse that propagate as well as the length of propagations. One convenient way to quantify this cell phase modulation, this is to use the uh, B integral, which is simply the product of gamma by the input peak power and by the propagation length. So if you change the phase of your pulse, then you will also change the instantaneous frequency of your pulse. This instantaneous frequency it is also called the chirp and this is the temporal derivative of the phase. And what we can see, this is that when you change the B integral, then your, the maximum of the chirp will increase with B, but it will not uh, change its position. And this position and the parameters can be quite easily uh, calculated analytically. Here, this is the result that can be derived for a Gaussian input pulse. And as a consequence of the chirp, this is that the spectrum of the pulse will be changed by the nonlinearity. The spectrum will broaden and it will um, experience some very strong fluctuations. So, of course, if you want to propagate a pulse and change, you may want to mitigate the consequences of these cell phase modulations. And for this, the most natural way, this is to try to reduce the B integral. And you can do this, for example, by reducing the gamma coefficient. This is the idea of using large mode area fibers or holocore fibers where the pulse propagate in air with low nonlinearity. You can also try to, to decrease the input peak power. This is the principle of the chirper simplification that has been very, uh, very successful in the field of fiber amplification. There are other strategies and you can also take advantage of the nonlinearity. This is, for example, what you can do by using soliton, where you have an exact balance between the cell phase modulation and the phase that is induced by the second order dispersions. However, here the restriction is that those pulses, they are highly restricted in terms of initial pulse shape as well as uh, input pulse uh, energies. And as a kind of non-linear structure that may be used, this is the similar return where the spectrum does not experience strong fluctuation. However, uh, the non-linear pulse still broadens in the frequency domain. The spectrum is not preserved and at the end, you obtain shorter pulses, which could be beneficial for various applications. 
Here in this presentation, we will focus on a third strategy, which is to use a negative nonlinear index, an, uh, a material that could be uh, able to induce the opposite chirped uh, with respect to surface modulation. So such a material with a negative gamma coefficient does not exist or is not practical. So what uh, we will use, this is an artificial negative nonlinear index. And this artificial medium is this is just a phase modulator that will be driven by an electrical signal which will induce a phase modulation that is exactly opposite to the uh, phase modulation that is induced through the nonlinear effect. So this idea has been uh, proposed by Xu, Crick Xu and uh, Malenauer uh, 15 years ago. And uh, some other works have shown that it can be uh, very convenient for, for example, communication and the use in laser communication system. So we can see here how it works. The chirp induced by SPM is plot in blue and the external phase modulation uh, induced chirp that is here plot in green. And when we add two contribution, they perfectly uh, compensate each other and the total chirp is, uh, is zero over the whole pulse. And the, it works for a large range of temporal uh, values. So what is our contribution? Here, uh, what we want to investigate, this is uh, the influence of the, uh, the modulation that you will use. Uh, indeed, of course, the, the perfect choice this is to use exactly uh, the, the opposite of the chirp. However, it requires to have some high optoelectronic bandwidth. And sometimes you cannot have this bandwidth. It may be too expensive or it is just limited by the possibilities of the current optoelectronic. So here, what we want to use, this is a very simple waveform, which is sinusoidal. And the interest of this waveform, this is that in terms of bandwidth, you just have to deal with a single frequency, as uh, this is the easiest uh, waveform to produce. So here, I have taken the same example as before, a Gaussian pulse that induce uh, the SPM chirp plot in blue. And here, to compensate the chirp, we use a sinusoidal waveform uh, plot in green. We can see that it differs uh, from the perfect modulation. But what is nice this is that when we add this external modulation with uh, the one that is induced by SPM, we cancel uh, the frequency chirp over most of the central part of the pulse, as we can see here. There are deviations. Uh, that may be quite strong, but they are in the wings of the part, so it will affect, in terms of energy, uh, some m not the m not most of the energy of the pulse. So here, from this, it seems that a sinusoidal wave could be uh, very uh, promising. And what is nice, this is also that it's quite easy to find the parameter to involve experimentally, because as we can see here the uh, sinusoidal modulation should have an amplitude that is identical to the, uh, to the maximum of the chirp that is induced by SPM. And regarding uh, the frequency of the sinusoidal modulations, it will be directly linked to the position of uh, the maximum of the chirp. So we can find them very easily and it analytically. So as we can see here, if we use this strategy, it will work very well over a wide range of B values. Now, another way uh, to see this mitigation, this is to plot the result on a graphic plot 
where the intensity is the radius and uh, the phase is the angle that we use in this uh, polar plot. And we see that when we have a pulse affected by safe phase modulation, we have a very nice archimedium spiral. Whereas when we switch the modulation off, on, sorry, uh, we have here something that is nearly a line which uh, leads to a Fourier transform pulse. So we can see here that the mitigation scheme involving a sinusoidal chop is very uh, efficient. Now, what happens on the spectrum? Well, what we can see here, this is that the input pulse, when we switch the phase modulation on, is significantly broadened. This is here uh, what we see in blue. Now, when we put the external phase modulations, we retrieve the input spectral wave. However, the power at the central uh, frequency is not exactly the same as, as in the input. And we can understand this because when we plot the result on a logarithmic scale, then we see that there are some uh, wings that appear that were not present in the input pulse. So this energy that is present in the wings explain that we do not retrieve exactly the same uh, power at the central frequency. So if we compare the result with our phase modulation here and with phase modulation here, according to a large range of values for the B integral, we can really see that the process worked pretty well over a, a large uh, range of B integral. And we may quantify how uh, well it works by using uh, the root mean square spectral broadening factor that will take into account uh, the presence of the spectral side lobe. We can make the calculus analytically uh, and what we see, this is that using a sinusoidal uh, modulation, phase modulation decrease by a factor of 4 the RMS broadening factor. And we can also um, calculate another parameter, which is the strain ratio. So what is this strain ratio? This is just the ratio between here, uh, the power that we have at the central frequency and the power uh, that is at the, at the uh, central frequency for the input pulse. And what we can see, this is that using the phase modulation, the swell ratio is significantly increased. So here we can see once again that sinusoidal phase modulation is highly beneficial. So all those results they are derived for a Gaussian pulse, uh, but we can also uh, wonder if it may work with other pulse shape, such as for example an hyperbolic second pulse. So we have done the same thing and what we can see in a range, this is that with the external phase modulations, we retrieve the same spectral wave, but here uh, the power of the central frequency is uh, quite heavily affected. It is less than the input power at the central frequency. So it works, but it does not work as well as the previous case for Gaussian pulse. However, if now we slightly tune the parameters of the uh, sinusoidal phase modulations by simply changing the frequency of the modulation and its amplitude, we can see that we can strongly improve this result here in the purple uh, where in the purple curve spectrum, uh, the results are nicer than the orange curve that have been uh, derived from the analytical predictions. And how can we explain this? We can see that for the orange case, what we obtain, this is a chub that is flat over the central part of the pulse uh, mainly. However, when we use uh, mod uh, sinusoidal modulation with slightly tuned uh, frequency and amplitude. Th in this case, the chirp at the center is not reduced anymore. We have some uh, chirp at the center. 
So how can it produce better results, even if we have some residual chirp? Well, if we l uh, have a look on the result uh, plot on a logarithmic scale, we can see that we uh, have a very different profile. Here, this is with the analytical uh, strategy. The, uh, the pulse has a low phase only on the central part. With the optimal phase modulation, what in fact appears this is that you will uh, have an interference process, an intrapulse interference process. You will have the same fre frequency at two parts of your pulse and it will lead to a spectral interference that you boost the, your central part of the spectrum. So this intrapulse interference really enhance uh, the result and the mitigation. So now let us see how it works from the experimental side of view. Uh, we have carried out the experimental demonstration at the wavelength of the telecommunications and what we use this is at the input a continuous wave laser that is then modulated in intensity uh, using an electrical signal and in order to generate a bell-shaped pulse we use a low-pass filter. And here are the typical uh, intensity profile that we have used. Those are pulses that uh, have a temporal duration at full wave at half maximum which is around 100 picoseconds. And it is interesting to plot the time derivative as this intensity profile because it will be proportional to the chirp that will be induced through surface modulations. And when we do this, we can see that this intensity gradient is in close agreement with a sinusoidal fit. That means that we can expect that the mitigation uh, will work efficiently. So in order, to, in order to induce cell phase modulation, what we have used, this is uh, a spool of highly nonlinear fiber, which is, high, uh, which is half a kilometer long, and an Abiob dot fiber amplifier in order to have enough peak power at the input of the fiber. We characterize the output spectrum, uh, the output spectrum by an output put that by an optical uh, spectrum analyzer and we have also checked that the intensity profile was not changed by the nonlinear propagation or by the mitigation scheme. And the uh, central part of this talk, this is how we have mitigated the safe phase modulation. Well, this is very simple from the experimental side uh, of view we have just used a phase modulator driven by a sinusoidal clock. Here, uh, this is at a frequency of 4 GHz. We have here, however, to be careful because, of course, uh, the pulses and the uh, phase modulation have to be synchronized. So now, let us see the result. We can see that after propagation in the nonlinear element, the spectrum is significantly broadened, but when we switch uh, the, the external phase modulator on, then the pulse retrieve a spectrum that is very close from the input one. If we plot the result on a logarithmic scale, we have uh, profiles that are in agreement with what we have previously discussed with the numerical simulation and we see here that we have some side lobes that have uh, emerged from the spectrum. So we have tested different values of the B integral and we can see that over a large bandwidth, all of, over a large range of input values, the modulation scheme works very well. And uh, we can see here that the broadening factor of the pulse remains very low and that uh, the structural ratio of the pulse remains, on the contrary, very high. So what we have also done, also do, 
uh, this is to add some distributed gain in the nonlinear element simply by using Raman, uh, distributed Raman uh, pumping. And what we can uh, see this is that uh, even if we had some gain in the nonlinear medium of propagations, the mitigation scheme works very well, and our um, results uh, that have been recorded experimentally are in very close agreement with what can be predicting uh, using uh, the uh, numerical simulations. So, before conclusion, let me uh, just now say a few words about the influence of the pulse duration and dispersion. Indeed, all the previous uh, results that I have shown, both from the numerical or experimental uh, point of view, have been obtained with long pulse, typically around 100 of picoseconds. That means that, in this case, the pulse propagates in a regime of propagation that is purely nonlinear. But now, if we consider shorter pulses, for example, around 10 picoseconds, in this case, dispersion may affect the, the propagation and it may change the way the pulse will evolve inside the nonlinear element. So, here, uh, one question that arises is that uh, is uh, the mitigation scheme that we have demonstrated still efficient? and does it work? And in this case, we have also to choose the kind of mitigation that we do, because we can make the mitigation prior to the nonlinear elements, or we can do it after the nonlinear elements, and the result uh, will be different. So we have run various numerical simulation. On the conclusion, this is that the results are better if you make the mitigation prior to the nonlinear element. So it is better to make a pre-mitigation of the nonlinearity than achieving the mitigation at the output of the fiber. And what we have also uh, seen, this is that if we use uh, the, adjust the adjusted parameter for the, the amplitude and the frequency of the sinusoidal modulation, then the results are really strongly improved, especially for uh, shorter pulses. So uh, we can see it also on the spectrum. We see that according to the mitigation scheme that we use, we can have very strong improvement of the results. Uh, finally, here in this graph, we compare the results with the various scheme for different value of uh, the B integral, and we will see that the best results are obtained if we make the mitigation prior to the nonlinear element with parameters that are optimized. So it works very well uh, over a very broad range of value of the B integral. So to conclude, we have shown that uh, it is possible to mitigate self-phase modulation simply by applying uh, sinusoidal phase modulations in the temporal domain. Analytical design world can be easily found and they work very well for Gaussian pulses. However, uh, we may have to adjust those parameters especially if uh, we use shorter pulses or if uh, the waveform is not uh, very close from a Gaussian pulse. But dispersion is not a problem and uh, we can think that if we can, uh, for example, m make phase modulation uh, with modulation around one picosecond, it will not be a problem to uh, compensate for SPM of a neutral short pulse. So here are some references of our works that deal with this um, uh, with this problem. So thank you for your attention.